<clears throat> We're waiting for playing of our national anthem. There we go. Right. We're going to be set for kickoff. Case of the Gators have about 25 guys dressed out. Look, that could be a factor. I watched them play Eden hey, White you know, earlier in the season. Um, and in the first half, it was very competitive, zero to zero. In the second half, Eden White wore them out, quite frankly. Uh, kind of broke them down. That'll be a big storyline today is can they keep enough gas in the reserve to go the full four quarters here. It's going to be a big challenge. Bulldogs set to receive. They're going to have Phil and Itch and Hunter <laughs> back deep standing at their 20-yard line. Gators set to kick off. Number 18. Demai. That's what I said for the captains. <laughs> I, I hope that's what it is. Malachi Demai. Big crowd once again, and next week between the LCO and Golden Meta, yeah, it's gonna be a packed stadium. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Demi is the way. Demi, the Bulldogs, well, we, we're gonna go Demi. That way, it's not our fault if it's not right. Demi set the kick. And number eleven, Kale Hunter. Filling itch and Hunter back deep. Coaches the ball, and we are underway. High kick straight down the middle. Field by Hunter. 20 to 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Tackled right at midfield. See where they spot the ball. They were spotted in the 49 into Gator territory. It's a nice return by Hunter for the Bulldogs, giving them great field position. Didn't get the number of the young man for Bayou Blue, but someone made a touchdown saving tackle. If he doesn't make that tackle, it is off to the races and a great start to the game for LCO. Spot the ball in Gator territory at the 49 yard line. Just underway. Nine, LCO and Bayou Blue. Bo Robert, quarterback for the Bulldogs. Very physical Bayou Blue defense. Let's see how they Two handle this. Set filling it in motion. Ball's going to be given to Sherman on the right side. He's at 45. 40 picks up the first down. 35-yard line, knocked out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. So, nice opening play for the Bulldogs. Couldn't have scripted a better start. You get a long kick return, and then you get it out. Oh, 17, 18 yards on the first play from scrimmage. Great start for LCO. Bulldogs have the ball, the Gator 32-yard line. 
From the center, three back set. They're going to shift over as the wing. It's still an itch. Double wing set. Back to eye formation. Mm. Hard snap. They don't come across. Ball's going to give it a hunter. And over the right side, He'll pick up positive Peter yards Hunter. to about the 28, 27 right yard line. Hunter Babbitt on the stop for Bayou Blue. A good job there by LCO not committing a false start penalty, Brian. Because whenever they flinch, yes. sometimes those linemen fire out. Good job there staying in your stance. Second and five. Ball's about the 28-yard line. Opening drive of this game. The LCO offense has struggled at times this year. You get down this close, you got to score, man. This is a big, big spot. Bulldog shift again to eye backfield. Robert gives the snap, gives to the second guy. That's filling it from the left side. He cuts across the field, the 20, picks up the first down. Dragon of defender who tackled at about the 17 yard line, picks up the first down for the Bulldogs. Big old hole opened up by that offensive line. Mason Guidry, one of the guys blocking. Reggie Rodriguez. Bulldogs coming with a great plan to start this game. A lot of movement in their formations, taking advantage of numbers. Two back set. Uh, Hunter in motion is giving a share on the left side. This time nowhere. Trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. His forward number, progress will give him a loose and a yard one, or two on the play. Yeah, good penetration that time from Bayou Blue. Big boys up front for the Gators on defense. Is that 12? That's a big dude. Yanez, Eric Yanez. Second and 11. 5.33 in the first quarter, just underway. Two back set. Man in motion. With the ball to fill an itch on the right side. Cuts to the inside. Inside the 15 to about the 13 yard line. We'll bring up a third and about six. Ty, sorry, Coach Ty Dalton checking into the game. Big number 93 LCO. Subbing out a receiver, Inside subbing in alignment the as their formation gets a little heavier here down in the goal line situation. Let's see if they go unbalanced here. Four fifty and counting first period. Yeah, very methodical first drive. LCO using a lot of time. They're going to shift over. It does look kind of unbalanced. To the right, it is. The snap gets the hunter on the right side. Hit in the back. He fumbled. He fumbled the ball. On the ground. Gator City have it. Waiting for officials. By Blues defense is leaving the field, Bubba. They're certain that they got it. And they do. They have it. Yep, they do. Hunter broke a tackle in the backfield and he kind of spun him around. And as he was, he was spun around, somebody from the Gators came and hit him. A hard hit, causing the ball to come out. We talked about that in the pregame, the physicality. It looked like the ball kind of went to his hip a little bit. He started sort of halfway lost it. And then whenever the big blow was delivered, the ball came out. And, boy, that's costly. You get into the absolute fitness red zone and don't score at all. Ball um, spotted tough. at the seven. See if the Celsius defense could pick up their offense and get it back right away. <clears throat> Brock Babin in the gun. And in motion. He looks to pass. Over shoots his receiver on the... Left and side of the field, Jennifer Verdon. Verdon was incomplete. He was a little bit open, but not if you throw it 10 yards over his head. It just didn't give himself a chance. A little bit too much air under the ball. But good coverage by LCO also. Ball yeah, ball I think they were going to some type of timer right, but he got held up in the line of scrimmage. Brings up a second and 10. LCO would love to make them punt from right here in the end zone. Get a Great field position for your second offensive drive.
Bobbing in the gun. Hunter bobbing in the back with him. Hunter bobbing in motion. Drop snap. In the gun. That's the whistle. The uh, whistle. False start. False start. That's uh, actually probably a break for Bayou Blue because you fumble a shotgun snap in the end zone. You're in a bind. Gators going the opposite way. Fumbled snap, but penalty procedure on the Gators will back them up half a distance by the ball about the three-yard line. We saw him fumble the snap a lot against Golden Meadow, but then when I watched him play against E.D. White, they didn't do it at all. So kind of a hit or miss thing for them this year. Rock Babin in the gun. Landon Williams is the back wood. It's given to him. An inside run. Runs up the middle. Picks up a couple of the number one, so the, the middle. five. Brings Rock up a third and about Jeremy. 13 or so. Camden Jeremy on the stop for LCO. Made a good open field tackle. Ball be spotted at the four. Third and long for the Gators. See if the Bulldogs come with some type of pressure on a passing situation. 3.48 to go in first period, scoreless game. Bulldogs fumbled their first possession. Gators recovered and facing a third and 13. Shotgun. Flag on the play is going to be a procedure call on the Gators. Illegal motion in the backfield, so that's going to be declined. Gators will bring up a fourth down. Or the Gators at their own four-yard line. Why well, Blue might have caught a break that it wasn't grounding in the end zone too, because I didn't see a receiver there <laughs> at all. But they'll be punting from the end zone. LCO should have outstanding field position. Now, I've seen the Bulldogs practice one time this year, and they're working on this. Their punt return team, where when the ball's punted, the coach is yelling, "Do not go downfield and just touch the ball." Oh, they don't even have a return man back here on this one. Might be coming on an all-out block. Not the punt for the Gators in the 18. Demi set the punt. For the Gators. High snap. Gets oh it. Punts it away. It's blocked. A lot of Bulldogs. Be, the ball's going to be recovered at about the six-yard line. Oh, and my. I'm not sure if that ball was blocked or missed. If it was not blocked, it touched an LCO player when it was skipping around. I don't know what the official ruling is, but it looks like it's going to be first and goal for LCO. They're discussing this here. I think that ball was not blocked, and I think it hit a Bulldog first. Nope, they'll give it to LCO. But, um, man, if you're Coach Bourne of Bayou Blue, you got to be saying, yo, uh, long snapper, we got to get the ball to the punter quicker than that. That was a lollipop. Officials are still talking. Yeah, there is some confusion. Yeah, Coach yeah. Pokey's on the numbers. He wants to know what's going on. Coach Bourne's on the numbers. He wants to know what's going on. I'm sitting in the press box, and I want to know. Casey, the only thing they can be talking about, it's going to be LCO ball, that if the ball was blocked or not. Bulldogs will have the ball. They'll spot the ball. Looks like at the six-yard line. Yeah, so now it's almost like the turnover never happened, right? You know, your defense got it back for you. You get a mulligan here. You got to turn this mulligan into a touchdown. Under center, Robert high backfield. It's a snap. He'll give to Hunter on the right He's side. He's at the five, the inside the five, fighting for yardage. He'll get down to the three. <clears throat> Second and goal for the Bulldogs. At the three-yard line. Yeah, good first down gain. You started the six, you get to the three. Tucker Lee checking into the game for the Bulldogs. Ball security here for the Bulldogs. And this, for the first time all year, is LCO 
being ahead of the field position battle. Because, boy, they've been against it at times this year, but finally ahead of it. Man in motion. Hunter. Ball's given to Phil. Oh, mishand, miscommunication in the backfield. Robert will keep the ball. Will get into the end zone wow. for the Bulldog touchdown. Bulldog Look, touchdown. dude. Um, that had disaster written all over it uh, because he was trying to hand it off. Denton was just kind of holding the ball. But a great job by Bo Robert having the presence of mind to know, hey, let's just get up the field and get something. And the something that he got was six points, getting it into the end zone. What a run. Miscommunication. Look, his forward progress looked to almost be stopped, but the Bulldogs did a good job of pushing him into the end zone. Bulldogs going for two. Hunter in motion, giving the filling itch on the right and side. He gets in the end zone for the touchdown. Two point conversion, good. That brings out score. LCO eight. Bayou Blue zero with 2.33 to go in the first quarter. We'll take a one minute break. You're listening to Middle School Football with King LAB. Back deep for the Gators, number one, Williams. Sereno kicks number for the two, Bulldogs. Turn. Falls going to be fielded, and one, Williams at the 22 two, yard line gets to the middle of the field, cuts up. No run to room. He'll get a decent return. Down, by number 19, the 33 yard Matthew. line. Yes. Landon Williams on the return Ryan. for so, the Gators. Bayou Blue was buried in their own end zone their first drive. Now they have a little breathing room. Let's see if they could open up their offense a little bit. Yeah, we kind of expected uh, Bayou Blue to come out and throw the ball a little bit more. Maybe they didn't want to do it backed up. So with some room to run uh, to work with, might be a different set of downs here. Looking for 24 for LCO. Brady Wells, he is available today. Got hurt on the first play of the season. Good to have him back. Connor Long in the game. Drops the snap, falls on it. Back at about the 26-yard line. The yeah, Coach Bourne immediately called a timeout. He's living. Ball He's going to lay snap. into his team for one minute. Look at him. He is – he's not happy. No, not at all. And Connor Long was back – in was at quarterback that last play that leads you to think they were probably going to throw the football – you see that in basketball sometimes. You know, a team gives up a fast break layup. The coach runs on the court, calls a quick timeout. You don't see it as often in football, but right there, as soon as they fell on the football, Coach Bourne was, all right, give me one, and uh, y'all get over here. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a good timeout because you don't want that mistake to definitely lead into another mistake yeah. back to back. So a good timeout by Coach Bourne. Great start to this game for LCO. LCO has been behind the eight ball so many times this year. 2.18 to go in the opening period. LCO eight. Bayou Blue zero. Bayou Blue facing a second and about 16, 17. Backed up at their own 26-yard line. Their quarterback, Brian, does have a big arm. He can stretch the field if they get the snap to him clean and give him some time. Looks to be long in a quarterback. Rolls to his right. Has a receiver. He catches the 26-yard line. And he'll be corralled for a very short game. 11 and 23, Hunter and Smith. Reserted on the reception. Number 11, Gail Hunter. 
Third and long for the Gators. Ball is going to be placed at the 27 yard line. In a short game. If your LCO don't let anybody get behind you here, it's third and about 16. You'll give up a four or five yard reception, but you don't want anything down the field. You can see the Bulldogs just coming with pressure, not giving the quarterbacks time to throw the football. Looks to be Connor Long. Two receivers to the far side of the field. The snap drops back, has a receiver over the middle, almost oh, intercepted oh. by the Bulldogs. Hunter was in, long time. Was in good he coverage, almost came hurt. up with the interception. That'll force a fourth down for the Gators way back at their own 37, oh, 27 yard line. High Blue's got to settle down, man. He had Four Vernon open. Long. That would have been close to a first down reception. Just everything looks a little off right now for them. Yeah, and if Long realizes he has more time than what he thinks back there to throw the football, he might complete some of these passes later in the game. Again, LCO doesn't have anyone back deep. The furthest back is Matthew Pierce standing at the 38-yard line. Back to punt for the Gators. Gators set to punt, the snap high again, gets a snap, punts it away straight down the middle of the field, takes a Gator bounce, now a Bulldog bounce coming back. To the 49 yard line. So the Bulldogs will have great field position starting at their own 49 yard line. 113 to go in the opening period. The Bulldogs are up 8 to 0. So you could see right away, right? Um, LCO is playing for the opportunity to have a winning season. If they win tonight, they win Tuesday, they're going to finish 4 and 3, have a winning season. And you could see that they're still invested, right? They're still fired up. They're going for that big goal, and it's been a great start for them so far. High backfield, Hunter in motion. Ball's going to be rolled out by Robert. Looks to throw the guy open. wide open. That's Jeremy into Gator territory. He'll be tackled. Wrapped up by number two, Vernon. At the 42, 43 yard line. Sharp. Good play call by Coach Pokey there. After a possession change, you roll the dice, the play action. It was a good fake by Robert and a good throw. Second and two, Bulldogs hurry to the line of scrimmage. Mm. Robert, good call a timeout. Yeah, I'm a little curious about that one. I mean, heck, they went on the ball quick. He had probably 30 seconds on the play clock. Instead of, you know, maybe looking to the sidelines and getting organized, he decided to call a quick timeout. But it's better that than make a mistake, right? Yeah, I think he looked in a line of scrimmage and somebody may have been lined up wrong. And he kind of said, I just call a timeout. Not yeah. panic here and make sure we get positive yards on this play. Yeah, not the worst thing in the world, for sure. 44 seconds left in the opening period. Bulldogs up 8-0. to zero. Driving. They are in Gator territory at the 43-yard line, facing a second and three when we get back from this timeout. See if the Bulldogs can punch one through and go up by two scores early. Bulldogs in their huddle. Face in a second and about three. Robert under center. Share me behind him. Hunter in motion. Counter play to fill in his back on the left side to the 35. Gets it outside the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Bulldog. On a great run, on a great call, also, Filinich goes about 43 yards on a counter play and showed some speed getting to the outside and getting into the end zone for a 14 0 lead, pending the two point conversion. We were talking before we got on the air how the LCO offense has not had as many explosive plays this year as last. Wouldn't have been able to tell it there, boy. Filinich got into the open like field and he was outrunning the secondary. Great play there. Bulldog set for the conversion. Three backs. Giving it Jeremy on the right side. Bulldogs is the way in the end zone for the two-point conversion. 
Brings out score, LCO 16, Bayou Blue 0. We'll be back in one minute. You're listening to Middle School Football on KTLEB. Torino kick the ball to the 20. The Gators, they're going to return the ball to about the 35 yard line. Brought down by number 25, Lions. Looks to be number two, Verdon, on the return for and the Gators. Lions on the tackle for LCO. Look, man, Bayou Blue got to make it happen pretty quick here. You're down in a 16 0 hole. We always talk about how short these middle school games are. Um, it's going to have to happen pretty quick here. You got to you got to at least let the Bulldogs know that you you're going to give them a fight. Gators playing the first and ten at their own 35 yard line. 28 seconds to go in the first period. This could be final play of the first period. In the pin, Brock Babin, back at quarterback, gets a snap, inside handoff. Picks up about eight on the play. There you go. Hunter Babin on the carry, picks up about nine. Clock is running, second and one. That should bring us to the end of the first quarter, and it does. So we're at the end of the first quarter. You score LCO 16, Bayou Blue 0. We'll take a one minute break and we'll be, we'll be right quarter. back. We'll Middle school football right zero. here on King Bulldog 16. Are you searching for the next best thing for your finances? At Synergy Bank, we have everything you've been searching for in a community bank. Stop by to visit our friendly team at Synergy locations near you or anytime online at SynergyBank.com. Member FDIC. The teams are on. <laughs> they want the wrong side of the ball. Now we got it set. <laughs> there we go. Gators facing a second and one at their own 44 yard line. Brock Babin. Shotgun. He has a snap. Off the it's a high snap. He had to jump. He threw the ball to Hunter Babin. He got tripped up in the backfield. We'll get back to the original line of scrimmage. So the Gators are going to be playing a third and one. Bro, um, we unfortunately know this all too well from the last couple of years covering Tarpon football. If you don't get the snap there, you don't have a chance. The timing right now is – being thrown the off, the quarterback's the having to jump, and you know, it, it, it's it's not a good situation right now. 
Shotgun set. Hit it to overload to the short side of the field. Snap gives to Williams in the backfield. He breaks the initial tackle, but not the second. He'll lose about five, six on the play. Good job by the Bulldog defense up front. Drake Ryan amongst a handful of Bulldogs in on the stop, and it looks like they're going to punt it away again. Well, I, I think Coach Bourne was telling his offense to stay on the field, and they were running off. Timeout, Gator. Yep, so now they have to have call to, a timeout. Yeah, he'll have to call a timeout. We'll keep it here. In case it, you start the quarter off uh, the Gators, you have a second and one. And two plays in a row, you pretty much lose yardage. Forces a big fourth down play here. Looks like the Gators will be going for it. I saw Bayou Blue against Golden Meadow. I saw Bayou Blue against E.D. White. I've seen Bayou Blue for a quarter and a couple of plays tonight. Something's off tonight. They're not playing well. Um, don't know if they didn't have a good week of practice or whatever. This is not the team that we saw a couple of times earlier this year. And this is the second time now in the first half that Coach Bourne has to call a timeout just to kind of say, hey, dude, like what the heck's going on? Um, looks like they're going to try to go for it here on fourth down. If they don't convert, it would be another short field for the Bulldogs and a chance to really grab control of this game early. Maybe look for the Gators to try and get to the outside if they can. That last play, they wanted to run some to the short side of the field and losing yardage as they're trying to get to the edge. Big four down play here, fourth and about six. Gators have the ball, their own 39-yard line. Brock Babin in a quarterback. He's in the gun. He has the snap. Looks to his right side. Has a receiver over shoots. Again, accepted by the Bulldogs. Number 19, Matthew Pierce. With the interception for the Bulldogs. Well, on the tip pass. Giving the Bulldogs great field position. First down, Bulldogs. A couple things there. A. Even if the pass was accurate, LCO was there, they would have tackled him short of the first down. B, a great job of playing the ball by Pierce, man. That ball was high, and he kind of juggled it, corralled it. Great job by him. And then, uh, man, just the timing all off for the Gators right now. Bulldogs take over inside Gator territory at the 41. Robert at quarterback. High formation. Given a fill in to the left side to the 40. And will be tackled a couple yards from there at about the 37. So second and about six for the Bulldogs. And a great good run by Silenich. Hard run. Did not go down with first contact. I'm Coach Pokey right now. I'm saying, hey, I'm up two scores and two two-point conversions. I have the ball in plus territory. Let's slow this thing down and control that clock. Grind that thing down. Second and six. Hunter in motion. Giving a share me up the middle. He breaks the tackle. Gets and inside the 35. Number 22, Jeremy. Offensive line doing a good job getting that initial first push. Giving their backs time, uh, room to run. run down, be a third down coming up for the Bulldogs. Four. But a third and two. And look, we've talked about this a couple times this season is that we um, have felt the LCO offensive line could finish plays a little better. There they did a great job of it. Finished the play, getting that last initial surge, allowing their back to get a couple of extra yards. Hunter in motion again. Ball's giving a feeling it's on the inside sweep. He's at 30, trying to get across the 25. He'll be tackled short of the 25 to about the 26, but picks up the first down for the Bulldogs. Yeah, big, big hole. Left side of the offensive line. You could have driven a four-wheeler through that one. Great job by the Bulldogs. Ball spotted at 26-yard line. Five minutes and counting to go in this opening half. Bulldogs up 16-0. to zero. Two back set, two receivers split to the near side of the field. Giving it share me on the right side. 
crosses the 30, tackled about the 29 yard line. Gain of about two on the play. Brings up a second and eight for the Bulldogs. Carson Terrier checking into the game for LCO. Gain of about two on the play. Second and eight for the Bulldogs. And they are doing exactly what we said they needed to do at the beginning of this drive. Grind the net clock down. 4-18 and counting, staying in possession. When you're winning and you have the ball, the other team can't score if they don't have the ball. Receive it to the near side to field. Giving a share of me. Tries to break to the outside. He's going to lose yards on the play. Good pursuit by the Gators on defense that time. Cooper Barber on the stop for the Gators. 83 had a lot of penetration. Jeremy will lose about two on the play. <clears throat> Brings up a third and ten. I wonder if he's going to try that little play action rollout again. They hit an open receiver with that the last time. Yeah, they do that a good job. They'll get Hunter out in the flats. See if they put him. The left side of their formation, get them in motion to the outside. Robert in the center. Going to give the ball to Hunter. He's at the 25, across the 20, inside the 20. Short of the first down. He got a lot of it, though. So he brings up a fourth and about three. Fourth and a long three for the Bulldogs. Maybe a situation where you hard count. If they jump, you get it. If not, you call a timeout and talk about it, perhaps. Right inside the absolute fitness red zone. Three back set for the Bulldogs. Yeah, there you go. Hard count. Gets in a jump. Five gives the Bulldogs the first down. It's a rough half for Bayou Blue continuing, man. Everything that could go wrong has. And LCO will get the first down for free. The one thing to pay attention to during that penalty, the clock has never stopped. So time is becoming a bit of a factor now as it's 220 and counting. Ball spotter on the 14. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. They're up 16 to 0. Bulldogs will play a first and 10 around the Gator. On the wing, two back set. Giving a hunter on the right side. Breaks the tackle back to cuts across the field. He's at the five. He gets in the end zone for the Bulldog touchdown. Nice run by Kale Hunter for the Bulldogs. Came right, cut it back across the field. Increases his team's lead 22 to 0, pending the two point conversion. This is. Uh as well as LCO has played all year. This has been a very strong showing in this first half. They're moving them up front, making tackles on defense, forcing turnovers on defense, and they're one play away from maybe having a 24-point lead. In great vision by Hunter, seeing the cutback, and he's got use of speed to get into the end zone. Looks like Kai Gidry checking in. Which Pokey wants a timeout, I believe. Not on the field. Timeout, Bulldogs. We'll have a timeout. 22 to 0 in favor of the Bulldogs. Been all Bulldogs early on yep. in this contest in the first half. Bayou Blue will get the ball back and they get the second half kickoff, but they're going to have to do something here with 156 to go uh, to make that second half kickoff mean something. Well, if I'm Coach Bourne, I. At halftime, I, I'm, I'm thinking about the defense I'm running. They're doing a, doing a three-man front and or hoping that the linebackers shoot in and plug some of those gaps. But the problem is their three men are getting driven back, and um, it's creating some big running lanes for the Bulldogs. I think that they, in the second half, may need to come with a little bit of a heavier front. Yeah, your job defensive lineman is to uh, keep those guys off your linebackers and let your linebackers make plays coming up. Bulldogs set for the two-point conversion. Bulldogs are trying to point after. Carson Terrio split out wide, right. Ball's given, looks like the hunter on the left side. Ten. Gets a push. He's in for the two-point conversion. That brings out score, LCO 24. Are you blue zero with 156 to go in the second period. 
with one minute and 56 seconds left okay, to play see. in the first half. Your score is. Why you blew it simple right here? This possession here. You Blue have goal. to do something with the football. Yeah, you got to score, man. Um, Try to score, then steal a possession, and maybe try to find a way back into this one. What you don't want to do is incomplete, 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 and you give the ball back to LCO. The thing that's going to hurt Bayou Blue, Coach, is they only have one timeout. That's where some of those panic timeouts earlier in the half may come back to bite you a little bit. LCO on the field. Wilbert Serino set the kick. For Bulldogs, back deep looks to be number one, Landon Williams. And is that number two, Reeves Verdon? Um, one and two, yes, sir. Yeah. You're back deep, deep for the Gators, standing at their own 20 yard line. Serino set the kick. Approaches the ball, the kick, low kick, hits rolling at the 30. But Gators will fall on the ball at the 30. That was number 14. Domain. Domain. So the Gators have the ball in their own 30 yard line. 153 to go, in the second quarter. One timeout left. See if you big boys up front could get a little push. So Coach Barnes is going to have to tell his guys we need to pick the tempo up. Yep, you're probably giving two – I don't know if you do that in middle school, but in high school and college, this would be where you give two plays in the huddle. That would be a nice luxury to have that in middle school. Yeah, don't know that we do that yet at this level. I think LC may have done that a couple of times in previous games. Gators break the huddle. Number seven. Not alone in the quarterback. Gets the snap. He'll give the Babin on the inside. Turns up field to the 30, 35. Short of the first down. To about the 37 yard line. Good job by Pierce making an open field tackle. Hunter Babin. On the carry for the Gators. And be this this tempo here just ain't going to do it. I mean, they are losing valuable seconds here, and they're huddling and subbing and don't have enough time for that. Clock running. We're at 123 and counting. Again, Gators have one timeout. Gators are looking for something positive for them on offense. Long gets a snap inside run again to Babin. He'll be tackled. Good tackle for a loss of two. Brought down by number 88. 88. Jeremy. Brendan Sheremy made a very nice tackle. Also see 51. Drake Ryan in on the play. And I'll be honest with you, Brian. I don't know how much Bayou Blue's really trying to score. I think they're just trying to get this thing to half. It's third and five. See if Coach Bulky gets one of his timeouts if he gets a stop. With the way those snaps have been getting to the punter, it may be worth seeing a punt play. Connor Long to the gun. Williams was there with him. There's a snap. He'll hand inside to Williams. Nothing. Nowhere to run. Will lose a yard on the play. Slow dogs will not call timeout. That should bring us to halftime. Gators have no interest in running a play with five, four, three, counting. That'll bring us to halftime with the score. LCO 24, Bayou Blue 0. We're going to go ahead and take a three-minute break.
great news, Homa businesses. We're here. We are Rev, a telecommunications provider with powerful solutions and unmatched local support. We've been bringing Louisiana people, businesses, and culture together for 85 years. Our fiber network delivers superior internet, phone, and security. It's big business technology with small business personal service. For a limited time, get up to $300 off business services. Call or visit us today at letsrev.biz. At Bourgeois Meat Market, our slogan is Miracles and Meat since 1891. To be in business over 130 years, most important thing is to have a quality product. The next most important thing is customer service. Our old meat market is in Shreveport, Louisiana, and we're really proud to be opening up our brand new store in Gray, Louisiana. We have Rev at both locations now. So all these new scales and our POS system runs on technology, and uh, we need Rev to make that happen for us. I highly recommend Rev Business.
and Verdon. And Ponda, this is a play right here that could go a long way in helping Bayou Blue out. They have uh, they've housed a couple of kickoffs this year, if I'm not mistaken. Serino approaches the ball, kick, bounces around at the 30s, picked up by Verdon in the 30s and the 35, 40. Shy to 45 to around the 43 yard line. So, pretty right good field position 13, for the Gators to start off this second half. And number 13, Lee. In case we got a little break in the morning, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I want a special shout out, a happy heavenly birthday to my dad. Oh, oh amen. He, he would have been 80. Wow. Today. Yeah, man, we miss him. He's a great guy, great guy. And also, um, my godson Jackson's birthday turned 12 today. Happy birthday. Yep. Family's uh, cutting the cake for him tonight. I was unfortunate I had to miss that, but I'll see you soon, buddy, if you're listening. Gators have the ball, the 44 yard line. First drive of the second half. Brock Babin in a quarterback. The snap. He'll throw a little screen pass to the right side, which is dropped. And that's a backwards pass. And that is not a good call. They call it incomplete. That was 100% a backwards pass. pass. Tried to do a little look. Like maybe Verdon out there. They were doing like that play that Ole Miss was doing to LSU. Uh, just kind of the quarterback underhand tossing it to the tailback. Which Polk asking the referee on this side, but he. No, what happened is it was a backwards so pass. The running back just here. kicked it forward when he dropped it, so it looked like a forward pass, but no, I, that should have been a lateral. Babinick, quarterback. Drops back, looking for a receiver. Back to throws pass. it over the top. It's caught at midfield. Cross midfield. That's Reese Verdon on the reception. There you go. Nice pitch and catch. You got a first down. Picks up a first down for the Gators. Good enough for Gators. First down. All spotted. At the Bulldog 42 yard line. And I think if the Gators are going to move the football, they're going to have to air it out. Yeah, they're having a hard time holding up up front to run the ball. I think you're right. Opening drive of the second half. Gators are trailing the Bulldogs by score of 24 to nothing. Have breaking news from the world of the NFL to give you after this play. Brock Babin, Williams in the backfield with him. Here's a snap. He looks to get it to Williams. He does after a couple of pump fakes. And they will lose about three on the plate. Yeah, Kelsey had that one snuffed out. And it's going to be a stop of loss of three. But the breaking news from the NFL, Trevor Lawrence is active and is in the starting lineup for the Jaguars tonight. Not a huge surprise there. But it is officially official. Gators playing a second down at the Bulldog 45-yard line. Six and a half to go. And by the way, while we're talking about injuries, Demario Davis is active as well as Teron Matthew from New Orleans. So they're both that, that helps. The Jags will win by two touchdowns instead of three. Gators have to hurry. <laughs> Babbin in the gun. The snap drops back, looks the receiver, throws it down the field. It's tipped mm -hmm. by number 23, Jaden Smith. Smith. Gives the pass, falls incomplete. Brings up a third and 13 for the Gators. Good job playing the ball by Jaden Smith there. Let me tell you, if he could have gotten both mitts on it and caught it, he would maybe still be running. Bulldog defense doing a good job pressuring the quarterback, not giving him much time to find receivers down the field. Gators come to the huddle. The clock is stopped on the incompletion. Shotgun set. Oh, got some room here. Number two on the right side. Comes back to the 40, 35, 30. That's Verdon. 
inside the 30, tackled, drops the ball, but he'll mark it, mark it down at about the 27-yard line. Yeah, you could see right when they handed that one off, they had a wall. That was a nice gain from Bayou Blue in the misdirection. Brody picks Later up the coming, first Bayou down. Spot we'll we'll the, the ball to 27. The See if LCO's defense could stiffen up a little bit with the ball, the 27 yard line. I think one of these cheerleaders won, just throw the ball through the wind to us. Kinsley Terrebonne could probably got the arm to get it up here. Shotgun set. Hunter Bobbin in the backfield. Would be a kind of a reverse That's to it. Verdon. He'll get stopped in the backfield for loss of about six in the play. 51, Drake Ryan was the first guy to make the hit, but he didn't make the tackle, so he's laying on the ground punching the turf. Drake, your penetration there is what caused your other guys to go in and make the play. Don't be so hard on yourself. Great job by the LCO defense there. It'll be second and about 16 or 17. Ball spotted in the 33-yard line. Second and long for the Gators. Second and long for the Gators. Bobbing in the gun. Williams in motion. Oh, all sides on everybody. Across. Coach Polk is saying offense move first, but nah. they don't agree. Defense came across. This but is it, one where if this were the NFL, you'd say offsides on everybody. Yeah. <laughs> There's about six or seven of them jumped into the neutral zone there. Uh, dead ball on social media right now, they have a, one of the greatest calls by an official ever. Referee calls the penalties on his microphone and yeah, gives it to number like 44, giving the guy the business. <laughs> <laughs> ball spotted at the 28-yard line. Our White Hat wants the clock to run. It is not. Don't know why it is not. Yeah, you, you can you could say to run it all you want. Yeah, they're not yeah. they're not paying attention to you, Bubba. Now we got it. It doesn't do any good to look up the press box of that guy <laughs> running the clock. Shotgun set. Babin drops back, looks for a receiver. Look out! Almost oh. shoots the receiver. Almost got to the second guy in back of him. Incomplete. Hey, got a scoreboard update. This is one that'll make me happy. Dominic sends a note. The Diamondbacks just got a walk-off win over the Phillies in game three. So the Diamondbacks make it two to one in that series. Go D-backs. You know Dominic only sends a message to you when it's good news? Yep. That's, that's it. That's all he does. Yep. That, that's exactly what we're paying him to do. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah. So Dominic can't hit nudge nudge only scoreboard updates when the Jaguars oh, score, yeah. please. Thank you. Shotgun set. Third and about twelve. Man in motion is gonna be tossed yeah, to, to, uh, to Babin. Ooh. He'll break a tackle, still breaking a tackle, cuts to the outside, close to the first down. Looks like they're going to give it to him. Fourth out of bounds, number 23. Fifth. I like our producer. He Four hears it. Up, Sorry, Coach. Well, I'm forced out of bounds, but the clock will continue to run. Um, so I'm telling Dominic text only whenever the Jaguars score. He just sent me a text message saying, I don't know if I could text that much. Thank you, Dominic. Dominic, you're not funny. Might have an extra 20 in your next check. You're not funny. <laughs> First down for the Gators. LCO coaching hard. They want to protect that zero. They don't want to give up anything here tonight. Shotgun set again. Drops back. Babin looks for a receiver. Has one right over the middle. It's caught. He's at the five. Turns to the end zone for the Gator touchdown. That is Reese Verdon on the reception for the Gators for the Gator touchdown. 24-6, to six, pinning the two-point conversion with 
3.23 to go in the third period. This is more of what we expected to see. We thought this was going to be a very evenly matched game. There by you, Blue shows a little life. It's amazing what happens when you get the snap to the quarterback. Not shooting yourself in the foot. You go down the field, you score. Big conversion. Shotgun set. Man in motion. Who's got Bobby Rolstead's right, has a receiver. It's caught. He falls down, but he'll fall in the end zone for the conversion. It's good. Here we go. Bullock. Nope. Horton. Keith Horton on the reception. Making a score 24 to 8 in favor of LCO. We'll keep it here because I have a feeling it's going to be a quick turnaround. Well, look, we said at halftime, game on. Um, you know, they go down the field, they score, they get the two-point conversion. And now, if you could force a three and out or a quick turnover, whatever, you get right back in this game. On the flip side to that, LCO's goal is simple. is whether we score or not on this drive, let's burn five, six minutes doing it. Let's get a bunch of first downs and let's bleed that clock. And, and look, I, I know they're not thinking this, but you sitting back here, LCO – you can't lose this game because you don't think that Bayou Blue can score three more times. Yeah. I and mean, we haven't had to worry about this yet this season. Um, what are the middle school overtime rules? Or is none. it just a tie? I believe there's none. Wow. Like tie. Okay. Gator is set to kick. Kicking for the Gators, number 18. Demi, Demi kicks the ball. Balls. Good high ah, kick right over the middle. No, Hunter no, bobbles no, the no. ball, misses it. He's at his 15, 20, 25, up the middle, trying to get to the 30. They may spot him at the 30. <clears throat> Wrapped up by number eight. The ball. Big drive for the Bulldogs here. And you want three. to get some first downs, flip the oh, field, yeah. work the clock. Ball's going to be spotted right at the 30-yard line. Main thing for the Bulldogs here, yes, don't turn the ball over yep. and let that clock run. Yep. Carson Terrio checks in the game for the Bulldogs. I like Carson Terrio. He's a good-looking kid. Bulldogs facing a first and 10. Bulldogs play a first and 10 from their own 30-yard line. 30-yard line, 315 to go in third period. High back set. The snap ball's given to Hunter. Again, he turns now to the right the side, Hunter. goes across field, back to the left. Same, Same play he scored left. on. Picks up about 10, Good 11, for enough for first a Bulldog down. first down. Good first Good down run. Delcio stays on the attack, continuing to get that big push up front. Bulldogs run to the right. He tried cutting back like he did on a touchdown run. This time the Gators were there. To stop the touchdown run, but cannot stop the first down. Shout out to a couple of them linemen, Darius Allen. One of those guys got a big push on that last play. Robert on the center. Gives the ball this time to Filinich. Second guy through. He'll pick up about four on the play. Getting the ball, the ball to the 45-yard line. Bulldogs playing about a second and six from their own 45. This is where your job as an offense is to be an anaconda. Just squeeze the life out of the game. Get four or five yards of run. Work that clock. Stay ahead of the chains. Just keep moving that ball down the field. Suck the life out of the game. Robert on the center. High back. Given the filling it on the left and side. The across the midfield. Picks up the first down. Into Gator territory at about the 43 yard line. So, nice run by Philanich. Picks up the first down for the Bulldogs. That was a little more aggressive than an Anaconda there. That was more of a King Cobra, but I think LCO will take it nonetheless. Big gain of about 15 yards. See, the fish are standing about 20 yards. They need a telescope to see what's going back. on. Yeah, we creep up to the ball. We're just kidding. Robert in the center, man in motion. That is Filinich. Ball's given a hunter on the right side. Good tackle. And pick up a couple on the play. 
Let's give him three. Jackson Domain for Bayou Blue made a really nice tackle and was trying to pull the ball out at the end of the play. Second and seven, 110. Clock running here in the third period. Bulldogs up 24 to 8. Well played game so far by both teams. Yeah, it really has been. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. It has been a well played game. And so far, knock on wood, an injury free game as well. Two back set. Hunter back in Ooh, motion. Oh, that's a false start. Ball's going to be given a filling on the left side. Yeah, He'll pick up a couple. Bulldogs Rack did up, get away with a false start. Yeah, no, no, they didn't get away call with it. it. Uh, we couldn't see the flag because the flag was on the right, white right. of the tarpon out there. But, yeah, good call by the official. LCO had their back moving right before the snap. That's an easy one to see. So that'll back him up five. Three, two, when you know it right as we say, oh, it was a clean game, no penalty. Have a three snap penalty. Second and 12 for the Bulldogs. Clock is running. Bulldogs will have to run one more play in this third period. Hunter in motion. Robert rolls to his right, looks for receiver, has Hunter in the flats. He's at the 40, breaks the tackle, gets about to the 36-yard line. Short of the first down. That'll bring us to the end of the third period. With a score, LCO 24, Bayou Blue 8. We'll be back in one minute right here on KLEB. Twenty-four to eight over Bayou Blue. Bulldogs will be facing <coughs> a third and five. Sorry about that. Excuse me, folks. From the thirty-six yard line of the Gators. Bulldogs in the huddle, coming to the line of scrimmage. Big third down play. Three back set. Robert gives a snap. We'll give to Philanich on the left side. He'll and pick up the first down the and a couple more. He'll spot the ball inside the 30 to the about the 29 right yard line. Keep the clock moving. Keep the ball moving down the field. Right now, my number 63, Gotro. First and 10, LCO at the Gator 29 yard line. Bulldogs trying to punch it in one more time. Yeah, you score here, it, it, it's it's done. Three back set. Filling it again. Left side is the 25. Tries to break a tackle. Pick up a nice gain of about seven. Coaching staff trying to tell him get to the outside instead of cutting back inside. Middle school, if you are running the football effectively, you could take the game away from your opponent. They have already burned a minute and 15 seconds off of this eight-minute fourth-quarter clock. Second and three. Lineage on the wing. 
Two back set, giving a hunter on the right side. Cuts upfield inside the 20. Falls forward. Don't think he got it. It'll be third and real short, though. Brought down by number 38. I think you're right. It'll be third down inside the absolute fitness red zone. For the Bulldogs facing a third and short. Third and very short for the Bulldogs. But they are inside All spotted at the 19-yard line. Already down to six minutes and counting in the quarter. Three back set again for the Bulldogs. Strong sides to the left. They give it to Phil and Itch on that side. He'll you know, pick up the side. first down and a couple more. And that's good enough for a Bulldog first down. Brought down the Ball number spotted three. around the 18-yard line. Oh, Hartman. excuse me there. That first down is brought to you by about the 17. Bulldog. Didn't need much, but I assume he didn't get much, but he didn't need much. He needed about a yard, got about two and a half. 5.30 and counting. Bulldogs taking their time in the huddle. Three back set. Snap, giving a hunt on the right side. Tries to cut back again. Very short game. Off to number 11. Look, Bayou Blues defense is doing a better job, but the fact remains the same. You're down Brooklyn, two scores, and LCO is bleeding yeah. this clock. This drive started at the three-minute mark of the third quarter. We're at the 450 Seven mark of the fourth the quarter. So they've had the ball almost a whole quarter now. Couple of coaches again on the sideline telling they want Hunter to cut to the outside, but he's doing a good job cutting to the end and picking up positive yardage and just safe plays, keeping the clock running. I think Keegan's going to call Bulldogs a timeout. Will call a timeout. Four twenty-six to go in regulation. You got this one well in hand. By the Bulldogs. This timeout is brought to you by Bergeson. Yeah, and, and what at worst you did, you flipped the field on them. Uh, if you come away with points, great. If not, make them use a bunch of time. Yeah. Make them Eaters. use a bunch of time to have to score. <clears throat> you know, and you were talking about when's the time to get some of your eight graders in. Right now, with that score that the Gators did, it's kind of a. Uh, yeah, I, I'm with you. If you could punch another one in on defense, though, maybe you could start to get some of them in. The young man working hard for the Bulldogs in an arm sling and hustling the water jugs in the, on and off the field for them. That was one of the coolest things about the Golden Meadow game Tuesday is Gunnar Feller, each one of their best players, was taking manager duties when he was out. That was cool to see, too. So Jasper Fusley. Inside counter to Filinich gets to the five, picks up a first down. They come back with a counter play. Yep, continuing to work the clock. It'll be inside of four minutes in the next half. Continuing to work the ball down the field. So at the beginning of the drive, got to be an anaconda. And boy, have they ever. They have squeezed the life out of that momentum that Bayou Blue built up. First and goal for the Bulldogs at the five-yard line. Three back set. Robert under center. The snap gives it to 25 right up the middle. Pushes hard. It's Lions. Tyler Lions. Hand off up the middle number 25. Lions. Pick up, Second and goal for the pick up a couple. Three yard line. Second and goal. Three yard line. 324 and counting. Coach Polky taking his time getting the play in. An eight-minute possession so far for LCO. That's that's really good work. Really, really good work. See if they give the ball back to Lions. Three back set. Snap. No, he's given. To fill an itch, he gets into the end zone for the Bulldog touchdown. Brings out score, LCO 30. Bayou Blue 8, two-point conversion coming up. 
What an answer. You give up an eight-point possession on defense. It looks like Bayou Blue, Blue might be starting to wake up a little bit, and then you go on an eight-minute and 20-second drive. You drain the rest of the clock out, and you score the game ceiling touchdown. That's uh, that's really good stuff from the Bulldogs right there, taking this game back. Bulldogs set for a two-point conversion. Single Bulldogs back set, try. that's so Lions, man in motion, Hunter, toss to Hunter, wide toss, makes a move, tries to cut back on the inside, right. stop short of the goal line, right. two point conversion is no good, that brings out score 30 to 8 with 255 to go in the ball game. LCO is going to get to 3 and 3. We'll be playing for an opportunity to have a winning season on Tuesday against their bitter rivals, the Golden Medal Lions. And if I'm Derek Brunet and the Golden Medal staff, I am letting my team know, hey, we can make our rivals have a losing season on Tuesday. I think that might be used a little bit in preparation. When you play in the LCO Golden Medal, any little thing you can do makes a difference. Yeah, I think we would agree LCO is going to come into the game favored, but – the team that's favored isn't always the team that wins that one. That's kind of a crazy one every year. Wilbert Serino set the kick for the Bulldogs. Williams, Verdon, back deep. Approaches the ball. Kick. Oh. Hits a Gator play right at midfield. Picked up by number 20. Reno's feet picked up by number 20. Babin. Hunter Babin. Yeah, one of the up bags got Touchdown. smoked by that ball there. Took a good bounce for the Gators. In the dome, the Jaguars got the ball first, and they are already in New Orleans territory at the New Orleans 35 yard line. Just underway. I hope that did not come from Dominate. It didn't. It came from Casey's iPhone. All right. <laughs> Gators, first and 10, the 49-yard line in Bulldog territory. Number seven, Long in the, in the quarterback for the Gators. Connor Long gives the snap, with toss to Babber in the backfield, cross midfield, the 45. Tackling at the 40-yard line, shy to first down, brings up second and two. I think Coach Emil Bourne is going to watch back the tape of this tomorrow and say, man, if we would have just been ready to go. Because the second half, their offense is moving the football. They just, in the first half, for whatever reason, could not get out of their own way. And that's going to end up being the difference tonight. We want to thank Bless Your Heart Foundation, Raleigh John's Blue Boot Foundation, Industrial Power Systems, and Danos for sponsoring tonight's game. Long in the gun. Babbitt in motion. Given to Verdon on the inside handoff. Across the 40. He across the 40. Down. Falls forward. Depends on Rush the spot down for the first down. Matthew. Yeah, looks like they'll mark him just shy to first down. Matthew Pierce again on the tackle for the Bulldogs. Matthew Pierce. Two not, minutes to go. Yeah, I was just about to say, not too many snaps left in this one now. This clock is bleeding down pretty quickly now. Long gets the play. Gators to the line of scrimmage. Facing a third and short. In the gun. Long gets the snap, gets to Williams on the inside. Push forward, he'll pick up the first down. And maybe a yard number Should be a first down, yes. The first down Number for the 16, Gators bro. with 124 counting Williams in this game. Bulldogs comfort, comfortably up 30 to 8. Mike Blue wants to take a little momentum for the road. They're going to call a quick timeout, try to get some time for their offense with 113 to go. Reminder stay tuned after the game. Casey and I will name the power player of the game, brought to you by Industrial Power System. Yep. Should be. Uh, I'd have to talk about that a little can, bit during yeah, the Yeah, a number of ways we can go, but we'll uh, 
we'll have a good little talk and just waiting on Dominic to send another message. They haven't scored yet. They are driving. It's second and 10 at New Orleans 26 right now. The luxury the Jaguars have is that all they need is a field goal and it might be enough tonight. <laughs> well, look. I, Saints, it's hard to disagree, huh? And the Saints are going to win 6-3 because they're getting three safeties. Three. <laughs> Gators, the line of scrimmage. In the shotgun. Williams in motion. Long will push it to him. Nice play by the Bulldogs. Breaks a tackle. Up in the backfield. Bulldogs had him in the backfield for a huge loss. Looked to be 25. Tyler Lyons came up, made a great play. To stop the run, and his teammates came and finished a tackle off for him. Timeout, Gators. 50 seconds left. Hey, Dominic just gave a scoreboard update, brought you by 3T that you're going to actually like. The Astros are winning three to nothing in the first inning against the Rangers. So he knows I like it. So that'll be the that'll last, be the last one. Yeah. On we only need Rangers scores from now on, please. The Jags are in the red zone at the 16 yard line after Trevor Lawrence ran for a first down in New Orleans. What a hurt leg. 50 seconds left in this contest. All Bulldogs. Yeah, look. <laughs> I'm giggling. We're over here giving baseball updates and NFL updates. The reason why we're able to do that is because LCO's got this one wrapped up. A great job by Coach Polk and his staff getting a big win against a much improved Bayou Blue team here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we have a squirrel siding on the field. Hey! Squirrel, well. squirrel in there. Squirrel back in the game. Yeah, he was hurt the first play of the season. Shotgun set, trips to the right side. Long gets it, rolls to his right, throws the ball, almost intercepted by number three. Kobe Nelson. He had to come up with that ball. That was a pick six for that young man. We just wish happy birthday to a young lady on the track. It's everybody's birthday today. Third and 11. Third and 11. 46 seconds to go in the contest. Pass broken up. Brought to you by Roselli Sports. See the Bulldogs come up with a huge interception here. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Shotgun set. Snap. Long drops back, has a receiver. Oh, it's intercepted off. by the Bulldogs in the 30-yard line. He's back at the 40, 45, plus midfield, 45. Humbles the ball out of bounds at the 40. Jaden Smith. Jaden Smith on the interception for the Bulldogs. First down. Comes up with a cramp. Looks to be a cramp. Hopefully that's all it is. Now it's time for everybody's favorite play in football, victory formation. And you laughing, I'm sure the Saints are down. Seven nothing. Travis Etienne, two yard touchdown run. Seven nothing Jaguars. They get the ball first, go straight down the field and score. I'm not sure why it brings you so much joy when they're losing. Because there's so many people. Oh, bro, Dennis Allen's not the problem. He's a good defensive court. Yeah, okay. Ball spotted the 41 yard line <laughs> in Gator territory. 35 <laughs> seconds to go. This should be. The last play of the game. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what it is. They got the young man still laying on the field over there. I think that's. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, it's a cramp. Yep, yeah, that's the hold yeah. up. Now we'll we'll be able to play. Bulldogs to line of scrimmage. They are in victory formation. Bulldogs in the victory formation. Robert takes a snap, takes a knee. Good night, Irene. And that'll be it. That'll bring us to the end of the game. There's 26 seconds to go in counter, but the Bulldogs will not run another play. Clock is running down. So with our final score, 
LCO 30, Bayou Blue 8. We'll be back in one minute to give our our play of the game right here on KLEB. For those of you watching on Bayou Sports, we say goodnight. LCO gets a 30 to 8 win. Our Edison West offshore, Billy Joe Brune, pay tie of the game goes to number 88, Brendan Sheremy, making plays all around the field. And our player of the game tonight, he had a touchdown run and he commanded the offense. I'll give it to number nine, Bo Robert for LCO. The Bulldogs defend their home field, get a 30 to 8 win for Brian Kiley. This is Casey Just saying goodnight, everybody. God bless.